What about our science graduates? So uh, do you think they have some good opportunities in uh, hardcore engineering firms? Oh, yes, absolutely. So uh, this was actually a question okay, posted by one of our community members. So. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, if, if you talk about just, you know, hardcore engineering firm that I'm talking about, if you talk about pharmaceutical industries, Dr. Reddy's lab, for example, in India, I'm talking about the Indian context or MNCs in India. Right. They have a huge demand for chemists. Right. Biochemists. What about okay. physicists? Yeah, okay. We're coming to that now. Uh, even physicists, Jivan, you know, we work on fluid mechanics, heat transfer. Yeah. Beyond the point, what are in research is physics, right? Yes. And and even when our collaborators, we, a lot of our collaborators in foreign universities are part of applied physics or theoretical physics or even sometimes applied maths. And we so, uh, in those journeys. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm even keeping uh, publications etc. aside now. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, I'll tell you my when I went to Colorado, the department chair was actually an Indian, Bengali actually, Professor Shubhendu Dotto, okay. chair of mechanical engineering. You know what was his background? Applied mathematics. He he's a math graduate, then he started working on applied problems, then he figured out most of the problems that he's solving is in the realm of solid mechanics. And that's how he got into mechanical engineering. Okay. Similarly, the person I learned numeric analysis from, he was working on hardcore fluid dynamics, computational fluid dynamics as part of applied maths department. So this is academia, but again, let's come to industry now. Yeah. Uh, again, if you talk about GE, material scientists, thermal barrier, aviation industry, thermal barrier coatings, okay? Or development of new materials for different products, okay? There's a huge demand of material scientists. Absolutely. Okay, even today also some of the things that you work on or, or some of us work on on microfluidics, it's about changing the surface, uh, surface wettability, right? It's a materials thing, fine, eventually, okay? It's- well, the oh, material is- uh, has an absolute right. and urgent need for chemists and coming back here. Yeah, I was coming next to that electric mobility, lithium and batteries, sodium and batteries. Yes. Okay. Uh, even you know, at Intel, I, I was working on electronics packaging. First of all, microprocessors came from semiconductor physics. Right. Keep that in mind. Many of the old time electronic semiconductor experts and electronics engineers are from physics background, including the people founded. Probably they didn't have electronics departments back then. Correct. So electronics department was actually goes yeah, back and, and finds physics. Physics. Yeah. Yes, finds its foundations in physics. Yeah. Okay. And if you today, even also, if you go to electronics industry, there are lots of physicists who are working there. Okay. Uh, material scientists, even in packaging types of Soldered materials, for example, you know, uh, I'll take just the, just the basic one, one example, which is, which has led to a change worldwide. And that is about uh, lead free solder. If you look at electronics products, the lead tin solder was traditionally used, but then under ROHS, which is reduction of hazardous substances from 2006 onwards, the lead containing solder is banned. So now people are working on what is called the SAC, which is tin, silver, and copper based, based solder materials. It's an entire shift in the industry. They're still trying to find out what is the optimal composition and what are the desirable properties. What is the composition that will take us to the most desirable properties, whether it's electrical, whether it's thermal, okay. whether it's structural, etc. So that's the materials problem. So and, and so examples abound everywhere. Mm. All right. So I definitely okay. see that science graduates have a lot of um, have a lot of scope. You just have to work on the right problems, and uh, and again keep your eyes and ears open. I'll I'll write to uh, since maybe I'll just add one more point. Please. This is another uh, you know something that our PhD students have to come out is that you should be ready. You have worked on some domain or some realm in your PhD. Fine, absolutely fine. Yes. But as I was telling that PhD is not about solving a specific problem. It's about gaining the acquiring the skills to work on problems, the solutions to which is unknown or solutions to which are, are unknown. Yes. And it's this the skill set that you have developed, which should give you the confidence that I should be able to solve any other problem. 
So this is another thing, again, taking a cue of your last question as well, that what should the, what should the students do? I see many people, uh, okay, what have you worked on this? What would you like to work on? Yeah, I would like to work on a further extension of this, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I've seen people in, in job interviews, PhD students, when they ask, okay, what do you want to, if you, do you have any questions from us? They say, yeah, I wanted to ask, what is the scope of publishing papers while working in this? Come on, publishing papers is not the priority of an industry. Exactly. That cannot be your top question in an, in, a, in an interview. That may be your personal aspiration. But your industry is not going to employ you to publish papers. Let me tell you that. 